Hey, how you doing? My name is Emilio. Thank you so much for spending the time. Really appreciate you spending the time and watching this video today. My name is Emilio. I work in technology and I love it. And we're going to get into some really exciting stuff in this video today. But before we do get into that, please remember as always to comment, like, subscribe to this channel as well down below, clicking on that bell so that you don't miss out on anything. Let's talk about money in this video, something that is very, very near and dear to all of us. And if you are an IT manager or you're wanting to move into an IT manager position, you need to know about IT budgets. If you don't have an IT budget, then it's very, very hard for you to get things across the line, for you to purchase things, for you to upgrade certain systems. It may be hard for you to get approvals to do certain things because it hasn't been budgeted for in the next financial year. So you need to understand a little bit around how IT budgets are gonna be structured and what you need to be putting in the IT budget. And then you will work, the IT manager will work very, very closely with the finance team generally, but also with your direct manager, a director, a CTO, a CIO, a CFO, a CEO. Uh, and you then get that approved and they go, yep, cool. We've now added that into the budget. It's been approved. So then you now know that for the next 12 months, which is generally the span of a budget, financial year to financial year, so mid-year to mid-year, and everything that's in there, hey, if it's been approved, great. You now have a bit more freedom to be able to say, look, I need to go and buy these 15 new laptops. And they're gonna say, well, was it in the IT budget? Yes, it was, here it is, great, go ahead. Versus you saying, look, I need to go and upgrade the sand. The, the sand is now run out of warranty. I need to go and spend uh, 10 grand on a new sand. Was it in the IT budget? Oh, no, 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 I forgot to put it in there. Bit hard when the budgets have been done already. The finance team have already gone and submitted the budgets. It'd be very hard for you to make a case to say, I need the money now. So it's always good to form your IT budget and think over the next 12 months. Think about in the next 12 months, this is all the stuff that I want. This is all the stuff that I don't have right now that I want, the stuff that I need, the stuff that we need to operate, so the BAU stuff, as well as all the wish list stuff, the stuff that would be good for us to have and the reasons why you want that. An IT budget, generally, this is the way that I would do it anyway, is broken down into an OPEX and a CAPEX, so your ongoing stuff, your capital, right? Two different sections. Categorize accordingly the price, the quantity, when you want to get it done, and a little bit of an explanation as to what it is, and that generally will be okay. And it's not uncommon that once you submit an IT budget, for you then to have a sit down with your finance team or with your manager to go through potentially line by line on the budget to try to justify and explain why these sort of things need to be in here. Some of them may be just as simple as saying, well, look, um, 10 of our laptops are gonna be now five years old in the next financial year. We need to replace them because it's good practice to replace your laptops every three to five years. Great, done. Versus, hey, I need a new SAN. That's gonna be a little bit more hard to sort of justify. So you need to explain why that needs to be purchased in there. If you have a wish list of things that you don't have right now in the budget, it should be included in there. All right, so uh, let's now show you a budget. Now I have put a budget in the, uh, the description area in, in this course, uh, at least a draft to sort of show you, uh, maybe it's useful for you, uh, a template on what a budget looks like. But now let's just show you roughly what this budget may look like and discuss some of the little areas within there. Here's an exported copy of a template for the IT budget. Now this is completely customizable and of course you wanna make this your own. I'm just giving you a bit of a big overview of essentially some of the items that you could include and some of the columns that you may include into here. Now, very, very simply at the very top, you'll see that it's called IT budget and it's got the year. Uh, of course, it depends on the organization, whether you do financial year to financial year or whether you do a January to December, but essentially generally an IT budget would cover a 12 month period. And then I like to have a column um, for the updated date. So when was the last time that this budget was updated? Now, as I mentioned before, I generally try to keep the IT budget up to date wherever possible. 
And then you would then work with the finance team, of course, to make sure that all of the items in here are correct. The finance team may go and add additional columns, may change some figures, may ask you about certain things so you can go and change it. But all in short, I've got the activity at the very top left, uh, the type, the cost, the quantity, the total, and the note. So the activity is, well, what is this particular item? Now you will notice, firstly, before we go into the activity and all the specifics, I've broken this down into OPEX and CAPEX. Go and familiarize yourself with what these are, but essentially it's your operations and then your capital. Um, so the ongoing expenses and anything new that you wanna go purchase that may not be part of ongoing operations. So just go and understand those two terms because it is important to know, especially when you are dealing with um, the budgets and you are working with a finance team to sort of understand which category some of these items may fall into. But the activity, as I said, um, is breaking down um, all the items that we want to be including within our IT budget. All right, so under the OPEX area, I've got things such as my software subscriptions, which are ongoing subscriptions, you know, potentially have to pay every month, every year. Um, then I've got my capacity, my maintenance. So things that I just need to uh, do as part of my ongoing maintenance for my IT systems. Anything I need to upgrade, anything that I wanna just make sure around the health of those systems as well. Printing, photocopying, telecommunications, consultant fees, vendors, and support. Now, this is very, very basic. Now, budgets that I've worked with ha can have hundreds of, you know, hundreds of lines in here. So this is just a very basic snapshot. You, of course, need to make sure that every single item that is part of your IT environment is captured in here. You don't want to get to a point where you need to buy something and it's not included in the budget. So have a think about every single item. Make sure that it's all listed in here. Okay, then under my CapEx, I've got things such as, well, I want to purchase some new servers, some new networks, some new storage devices, some new laptops, some new desktops, and other you know, miscellaneous hardware purchases, hardware and software for new staff, etc. The type here is, well, what does it fit into a particular category? You know, so software, is it software category? Is it hardware? Is it print? Is it contracts? Such as, you know, agreements that you've got in place, ongoing contracts, agreements with vendors, third parties, Consulting fees, so anything that's, you know, perhaps you want to go and get a consultant in. So I've put in here, I want to get a security consultant in for six days at a rate of 100, uh, 1,500 per uh, per day, for example, for six days, and that's the total cost. And then, um, you know, other things such as vendor support, things like that. So I've got the type and the cost, of course, how much is that particular one item going to cost you? And then the quantity, so how many instances of that um well, item do I need to be purchasing? All right, so for example, IT ticketing system, well, I know that that costs me $400 per month, so i.e. it's going to be 12 months worth. So 12 instances for 400 equals 4,800, and that's a total cost for that particular item for the entire uh, IT budget year, the financial year expenditure. Similar with Veeam, for my backups for our Office 365, I've got 12, so I pay monthly at $300. Now, MSDN license, well, I only need to buy that upfront once off. For example, I may only need it for that one year. So I only need five instances of that because I need it only for five staff, and that's at $1,200 per staff member. PRTG, which is for monitoring, well, that's just a once off purchase that I only need it for for $650, and then I may not need it again, but it may need to be included in my next year's budget, so I will re add it into there. And of course, you add items as you need to, you remove items as you need to. An example is, for example, if your budgets are due uh, in, you know, perhaps they're due in uh, February or May, February, April or May, um, for the end of June, that they become effective, say, July, you want to start thinking about the next year's budget well ahead of time. So I would recommend for any IT person that is managing this, try to have your budgets ready around the December, January time so that you can then start working with your finance team to make sure that the budgets all get approved because it's very common for budgets to need, need um, director approval or even board approval uh, for the particular figures that are included in here. Uh, so that's then the total, totaling a little sum of the 12 multiplied by the cost, and then notes if you need additional notes in here. I like to include my notes in here so that if I'm working with the finance team, they know straight away what this is about. It just saves them having to come to me to ask exactly what that is. So SAN storage disk, they may not have any idea what that actually even means. So I've just put a little note saying, well, this is hard drives for my SAN. I'm gonna need 40 new hard drives at $320 each because my company is gonna grow, so I need more additional capacity. 
and that's the cost associated with that. Okay, so try to add as much information that is relevant um, so that you don't get asked any questions. And then my total OPEX, there is my total figure, which is just an addition of everything that's in my totals. And then we move into my CAPEX. So for example, um, I've put in here, I want at least $200,000 worth in my budget for uh, additional servers, network and storage devices that I want to be buying in the next financial year. I'm gonna want new servers for growth uh, and that's what that is there for. Uh, I potentially will need 100 new laptops in the next financial year because I've got a whole bunch of laptops that are now older than three or five years, so I want to replace them, all right? And I've done that similarly with desktops, with monitors. Do I need any tablets? Do I need any iPads or any Android tablets? Well, I'm looking at purchasing 40 of those in the next financial year for roughly around $1,000. Now, these figures don't have to be exact, all right? My general recommendation is just put a little bit above what the actual figure is because it's very rare that a laptop will cost exactly 2,500. A laptop could cost 2,250. You may want a laptop then that costs 2,700. If it's say for a director that needs something a little bit more powerful. Um, a desktop may not cost 2,500. You may only pick up a laptop for 1,000, a desktop for 1,000, but some, perhaps your graphic designer, your video guys may need something that is more of a $4,000, $5,000 laptop or a desktop. So you sort of even that out accordingly, but I've just said an average of 2,500 roughly for that. And of course, these figures have to be approved. So some companies may not allow for such an expensive laptop or desktop to be purchased. It may need to be less. So you'll have to work with your teams to identify well, what is the correct amount that we wanna be spending, okay? And that's all the total CapEx down the bottom. And then my total IT budget, which is just gonna come in, come in at over a million dollars, for example. But of course, this will be very, catered to the IT budget that you are looking after. Um, if you're working in a specific role, if you're say the IT infrastructure manager or the IT service delivery manager, they're gonna be different because the infrastructure manager won't have things such as laptops or desktops or printers or things like that. They're gonna be now more server networking based, more infrastructure based, while the help desk manager may be more focused now on the end user and they will not have servers and networking equipment in their budget. So it's all gonna be catered. So there's the IT budget. Now something that I recommend is always keep your IT budget maintained and updated. All right, so even after you have submitted the IT budget and it's been approved or not approved or you've had to remove certain things or you've had to add certain things or you've changed the values in there. Now remember this is a budget. You don't have to do actual figures. All right, so if a server is gonna cost you $3,000 to buy, let's say for example, well, 3,000 is a bit cheap. Let's say an $8,000 server, you know the price is $853. Why don't you just put 10 grand into the budget? You've got a bit of money to use. It's better to put the a little bit extra than to be so exact and then find out later, oh no, it's actually more expensive or I miss that. So it's just an estimation of the figure for, for the items that you want in there, but you really want everything covered right? You want everything covered inside the IT budget to cover you. So as I said, make sure that you keep it updated, right? So once you've submitted it, start working on the following year's budget. Do a copy and paste of that budget. And then as the expenses change, as you think, hey, that would be good to do. Hey, that would be good to do. Add it into the budget because the last thing you, you want to do is wait till the very end, right before, a month before you submit the budget, and then you've forgotten all these great ideas that you had. The other thing is that your budget sort of works hand in hand with your roadmap. You've got your roadmap drawn up, you've got all these great ideas for your roadmap. Well, now you've gone and presented it and people have gone, yeah, that seems like a good idea. Why don't you be bold and add the, some of the items in your roadmap into your budget? Then they'll ask you about it. The finance team may say, well, what's this? And you say, well, this is an item that I propose in the board, to, you know, to the board over my IT roadmap and strategy. They seem like it was a good idea. So you threw it inside the IT budget. Put it in there. It's better that you've got stuff in the IT budget, a bit more in there and get it taken out than not putting enough in there and then realizing down the track, well, you can't actually do that now. You're gonna have to wait till the next financial year because you didn't include it in that IT budget.
So thank you so much for spending the time. I really, really do appreciate it. Please let me know in the comments below if you did find it helpful. Perhaps give me some recommendations for future videos as well because I always like to hear what you have to say. If you did like the video, please like it, comment, as I said, and also click on the subscription button and on the bell so that you don't miss out on anything. And also check out some of my other videos where we talk about all things tech.